Hello everyone and welcome back to the Off The Line Performance YouTube channel. My name is Grayson, I'm the shop manager here and behind me is our 2004 Subaru Forester XT. Uh, for a long time this was Justin's daily driver. Now we sort of use it as a shop commuter. Um, we'll send a gauge to run parts with it. We'll go pick up stuff, run errands. Um, or it's a backup vehicle if any of our cars are down for maintenance we can kind of whip this around but it started life as a automatic xt that was completely stock we have since five speed swapped it and now we are going to six speed swap it because it needs a clutch job and we have this old beat up six speed with the viscous coupling that we can't really use for motorsport so we're just going to slap it in our daily driver forester and make it a little bit more enjoyable to cruise around plus we get the look of putting the brembos on so all in all it's just going to improve the visuals of the car and improve the uh, drivability as well so I'm a little bit into it so far. Um, I started a little early before Richard came out. Um, so far I have the shifter trim taken off and the front hubs are about ready to come off. So we're gonna get those off and then we will get the rear hubs off and then the transmission will come out. So we're gonna get to it right now. Okay, so over here on the passenger side, I have the tie rod end, uh, it's ball joint out. I have the lower ball joint out, um, both of the stock uh, or the top strut bolts are loose, as well as the axle nut and all the ABS sensors, brake lines and stuff like that. So I'm going to pull out this last bolt and the hub's gonna come right off, just like that. So I have all my six speed stuff over here. I'm gonna make a little pile of the five speed stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, the, what could possibly be the hardest part about this whole process, and the GD chassis STIs and Subarus, which this is included in, the uh, Forster chassis is essentially the same as the Impreza. The back, lower control arms have this really long bolt, it's about this long, and it almost always breaks, strips, corrodes, whatever. I soaked it in fenitrin oil this morning I am going to get out my air hammer bit, add some vibration to it, and see if I can break it loose without uh, creating a mess. Really stuck. All right, we might return to those in a little bit. free but this one down here is not so when I'm twisting the bolt it's just twisting the actual bushing in the housing not ideal but I'm trying to figure out what the best method is because <clears throat> I can either cut the bolt and be done with it or I can take these loose here on the subframe and take the whole lower section out as one piece. But if we do that, then we have to get STI lower control arms. No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh! Oh, great heavens! My dude, adult Legos are way more fun than this. True. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rust on real Legos. No. Did you know, fun fact, did you know the largest tire manufacturer in the world is Lego? That's cool. That's kind of a true crazy. statement. Lego produces more tires than any other company. That guy. Yay. You ready? Okay, so Dana, what are you doing, dude? You want to be in, you want to be in the video? That we want? You want to be in the video? <laughs> okay, so we got the entire rear differential, um, lower control arms, and the old hubs out. 
Um, I originally planned on just dropping the diff and leaving the control arms attached to the subframe, but um, these early 2000 Subarus are notorious for having these really long bolt C's in the hubs, and that's exactly what this did. And I figured I'd rather keep the bolt in one piece so that we could possibly swap this into a different vehicle um, later down the line and just get some new white line uh, control arms. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some white line control arms coming in the mail. Um, and until those show up, we're essentially done here. I could put the diff in, but I like to do the diff with the axles all at once. So we're gonna take a break on the rear and we're gonna move forward, take the top mounting cooler off and start getting the bell housing bolts loose, get the starter off, and uh, then the engine, or the engine and the transmission should separate, so. All right, I'll get this out of the way. Perfect. Now you wanna go outside? You wanna go outside? Come on, let's go. Come on. The door's open, but you know, I gotta take you out there. You go outside? You ready? All right, go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go get him. <sighs> Let us not forget to disconnect the battery so that I don't try to weld today. Pipe. Tube. It's a little worn out. We have game time decision to make. I can either take this jack out and try to get the transmission out the way it is, or I'm gonna have to lower it down and grab my chisel and separate them with the chisel because this transmission's only been in this car for about four years, so it shouldn't be that corroded, but it might be. So I think I'm going to put the trans jack underneath it, kind of see where we can get with it, but I may have to uh, lower the car back down with the transmission drooped and uh, put a chisel on it. We'll see. Have you seen my, my chisel? It's a chisel. Seriously though, if you're thinking about doing this job at home, go to Walmart, uh, Dollar Tree, something like that, and grab the cheapest uh, meat cleaver you can find. The reason you want this is because meat cleavers typically have a more broader uh, top piece while obviously being sharp. And you can stick this between the groove uh, on your bell housing and you can hammer it in and it'll spread it out gradually rather than marring it up and putting a big gouge in it. That's why I have it. Like I said, just gonna get this in here. Oh, and it's already separated. I didn't even need to do this. Yeah, it's already separated. All right, back up, back to the top. Yep, all I'm gonna do is just pull the trans out. So I forgot to undo some harnesses up top. I just remembered. So we're gonna lower it back down once again. Gotta undo the speed sensor and the reverse and neutral switches. And there's a ground strap as well. So we have to unbolt from the firewall. Totally forgot to do that. Okay, so I used my pry bar here, put it underneath the diff housing and just pry it on the subframe. Be sure you take the pivot pin off of the clutch fork because that'll hang you up because I forgot that this one had one. So most five speeds have push style clutches. Okay. Now we can shove this off to the side. We'll get the new clutch on and then put the six speed in. Ooh, he's been on there for a minute. Oh man, his tail fell off. She I've never seen that. She probably keep the chip tail. You think so? Yeah. You got some good luck. Give him a pliers. I don't really want to pick him up. Yeah. Ooh, he's crunchy. Oh, we will pick up his tail. Okay. Okay. So this is our donor six speed that we have. We've had this sitting in the shop for a while. Um, it was a core that we got out of a race car that. Uh, it's, it's pretty bad for drag racing, to be honest. Um, but it's perfect for daily driver. Um, it has a short ratio first and second with a long ratio third and fourth. Um, I don't know who put the transmission together forever ago and decided to go that route, but we're gonna leave it like that because again, we're just daily driving this car. We're just running errands. Um, it's just a backup car, so it doesn't really matter. But the biggest reason we chose this transmission is you see this empty plug right here. There's normally two wires going inside and that goes to the DCCD or driver controlled center differential. This one has a viscous center coupling um, similar to like an old Wagavan. Uh, so there's no dynamic control and it's basically an open center differential. Um, so we're not going to want to use that in any sort of motorsport or, you know, high horsepower streetcar, anything like that, but it's perfect for this. 
and take the old destroyed clutch off. Okay. Let's get it out in the light. Oh yeah, toasted. So you can see it's had some hot spots and then the most important thing to, ooh, ooh, not on the lens. Uh, the most important thing to notice is how the material is basically down to the rivets here. Um, once you start getting contact from the rivets to the actual pressure plate or the fly flywheel, it'll start making some really horrendous noises. And by then your pedal travel should be basically all the way out. Um, a good thing to keep an eye on is where your pedal engagement is. Because if you bought the car and the pedal engagement was pretty down low and now it's getting higher and higher and higher, you don't need to adjust your pedal. You need to replace your clutch. That's garbage. We have this old WRX slash Forrester flywheel, five-speed flywheel. These are dual mass. Um, a lot of guys don't like to re machine them, but we're gonna save this for uh, whoever, whatever car decides to get this five-speed swap. It'll probably be like a automatic Forrester or something like that. So. Rather than trying to jumble, putting your red Loctite 262 on all the bolts and installing them, what I like to do is just put a little bit in each of the actual bolt holes on the crankshaft. It's just a little bit easier. I'll just wipe up the excess. Now we can throw our six-speed flywheel on. Okay. Check this out. So I'm gonna take this wrench and I'm going to put in one of the pressure plate bolts and I'm going to put the wrench on the stud it's on the bottom of the uh, uh, block here and it's gonna fixture the flywheel so that it doesn't move when I tighten it. I need an extension here, hang on. Okay, so if you're torquing down your flywheel, which on a Subaru is 55 foot-pounds on all eight of these bolts, if you just take a pressure plate bolt and put it into one of the bolt holes and then put this wrench on the dowel, you can actually use it to hold the crankshaft in place so it doesn't spin. Just like that, of course. Okay, so yeah, like I said, this is a competition clutch stage two. It's a sprung friction material and uh, a relatively stock appearing pressure plate. Um, like I was just telling Richard behind the camera. Um, this clutch we use a lot on our basic bolt-ons cars. Um, anything under 450 foot-pounds of torque because they drive essentially like stock, but they hold a pretty decent amount of power. So if you're in the 400 to 500 horsepower range, these are absolutely a fantastic clutch for the money. All right, we got our alignment tool here. I'm going to put this into the clutch and set that into the pilot bearing. It might stay put, which it looks like it's going to. These uh, pressure plates come with a uh, film of oil on them out of the box just to prevent corrosion, uh, flash rust and stuff like that. So you want to spray just a little bit of brake clean and wipe all that stuff off before you put it on. All right, now we can take our pressure plate Put it up here. Try to find home for it. There we go. All right. Then for all these pressure plate bolts, I normally just like to go in a star pattern and then a couple circles until it gets tight. You'll see as you tighten it down, these pressure plate fingers will start to go from being bowed in like this to kind of leveled out. That's how you know that it's getting close to being um, installed and torqued down all the way. Um, <clears throat> they do have lock washers on them, so if, uh, if, if you're curious, you can look up the torque setting, but I just put them on until they stop, and then I give them about a quarter to a half a turn. All right, so before you uh, finish up here, just want to make sure all those bolts are tight, obviously. You want to make sure that this uh, lock ring for your throttle bearing is in good shape. 
Um, these little fingers can get bent and what that'll do is you'll put your transmission in, you'll spline it, put everything together and then you'll go to engage the clutch fork and it won't engage and you'll have to pull the transmission back out. So definitely give that a good look before you uh, put the transmission in. Make sure you can't pull it out by hand or anything like that. This one's obviously brand new, it's in good shape. So uh, we'll continue on. Go any further, I want to put the six speed shifter assembly in. All right, we got that all loose. Now we'll just get the rear shifter bushing out. We're gonna grease our shaft. Get some of this all purpose grease. Really, sla I cannot spell. really slather it on there, you know. I'm gonna put the excess on the fork. Pressure plate's on. New throttle bearing in place. Fork is greased. I need to get the speed sensor off of the old one. Oh my gosh, it's so Grayson is letting his brake calipers dangle. <gasps> calipers. How about that? <laughs> Watch this, he just loosened up that belt there and he just, oh, and it goes right on. Effortless success. That's what I'm talking about. We have, we have. See this call? Did you know these are team orange brakes, dude? I don't know if that's too much sauce. Don't act like it might be too much sauce. Don't act like you knew, all right? Because <laughs> I, go I got those brakes from a customer, and they're like, I was like, what do you want me to do with the brakes? And they're like, well, you can keep them, and I just go, yes. And then I walked around and just go, dude, Grayson, I'm holding the brakes, and he's like, what? They're orange brakes. I just go, they're team orange brakes. Insert clip of. If you go up to those catalogs that we have up front with like all the rare Japanese parts in, those are in there. <laughs> all right, so Eric's cutting down the caliper bolts. I have the knuckles bolted down, the tie rod ends are bolted down. Uh, never took the sway bars off, so that's fine. Um, as soon as I get the calipers on, bolted down, then we'll swap the lines over and uh, start bleeding the brakes a little. Well, we'll wait to bleed the brakes until we get the rears on, but uh, the front's almost finished. So we're getting really, really close to the front being all done. Yeah, I know. Not to your face.
got here, Blue. Richard, watch me. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. All right, our 04 Forester is now officially STI transmission swapped with the Brembos as well. Um, it drives phenomenal. The gear ratios are way better for commuting and highway driving as well. This particular six-speed actually has a close ratio of first and second with a long ratio of third and fourth. So it's really easy to get out from a stop, but it gets good fuel economy as well. So along with that, a while back, we also did the JDM front end. So it's got kind of the whole Forester STI JDM thing going on and uh, yeah it looks fantastic the offset with the wheels is perfect couldn't be happier with the way it came out and uh, if you see us around town be sure to honk wave let us know you like it